there, friends, and welcome to my oubliette of terror. Now, you might not know what an oubliette is. It's a special kind of dungeon. It's a dungeon that only opens from the top. You know the beginning Army of Darkness where Ash gets thrown into like that well-like thing where the bog uh, witch is? That is an oubliette. It is a dungeon dug into the ground with a grate over top where things are thrown to be forgotten. That's where it gets its name. Oubli or oublier in French is to forget. And this is the place where all forgotten horror movies are just thrown and tossed away forever to be forgotten and out of all of our collective minds. It is with my hope that here down in my little dungeon with all these poor horror movies that have just been tossed away and forgotten that through rewatching these and making some art from them we can tickle the fancies and bog the memory banks and remind ourselves how much we actually love these. The first movie we are going to tackle is Wishmaster, a movie out of 1997 and one that many people may have not remembered. You may have caught it on cable TV or through walking through the aisles of Blockbuster. Yes, they might be showing my age there, but it was just a random movie thrown out there in the 90s where maybe horror wasn't at its peak. And let's face it, besides Scream, the 90s were kind of blah. But it's certainly one that should be remembered along with the other classics. Because not only do you have the amazing Andrew Devon, who is an amazing man all to himself, he speaks eight lang languages fluently, I can maybe speak 1.5 on a good day. It also has great like cameos from Angus Scrim, R.I.P. Fear one thing only in all of these scenes. Fear the chain. Um, at Tony Todd, we have um, Robert England, Kane Hodder, even Pazuzu. It makes a small appearance in the movie. You could play a little search and find drinking game along with this movie to spot all the fun little things that they hide in there. Even the director has a small role moving stuff in the background. Um, you, Along with Angus Scrim, you also have the other big phantasm name. Uh, uh, Reggie Bannister is also in there with one of the coolest death scenes in the movie, if you ask me. Um, but it's just a fun game to play search and find with all these little um, homages and nods and cameos to other horror movies. It's the horror movie for horror movie lovers, which is why we should remember this. Not only on top of that, it's also filled with practical effects. Remember those? The things that were handmade with love and affection from special effects artists? It's, it, it's amazing. The first five minutes alone of this movie, it's a gore scene of craziness all happening at once. People changing, skeletons coming out of bodies, going after other bodies, a man gets fused into a wall. It has all these fun, great little things. And then on top of that, you have Andrew as the djinn. And the djinn here is just phenomenal. He has personality and some funny one-liners that... And it, even the effects on the makeup too. I mean, look at his tentacles. It's just, they're so cool. <laughs> he, he's just incredible, both in makeup and out of makeup, too. I mean, it's, yeah, so many great deaths and fun things in this film. And for all of that stuff aside, the plot itself is pretty good. You know, it's all kind of maj paj together. It's not too terribly deep. Like, we're most certainly not talking Beyond the Black Rainbow here deep, but it's it's still good enough to carry your attention throughout the movie. You have Alexandra, a very hapless geologist who runs across a very large and pretty fire opal who tends to house our little djinn here, and unknowingly and unwittingly uh, releases the djinn upon the city to make wishes and kill people with them. It's like I Dream a Genie, but with death 
Alexandra, in the end, outwits the djinn. So it's kind of nice to see a smart female antagonist go up against when she just outsmarted him. She didn't go Ripley on his butt or anything like that. Although that would be a really cool thing to do in a sequel, which they, they did a sequel, but they didn't take that aspect with it, which is a shame. But she definitely uses her brain to outsmart the djinn and makes everything all good again. But still, plot aside, it's nice and fun and carries everything through just fine. But the real reason you watch this is for the djinn, the uh, special effects, and the kills. They're just... look at this. How can you not love that as a horror movie aficionado or fan? So yes, that is the movie that I have decided to do, and so on to the art piece of it, where I create a, a work of art for said film. I took the fire opal, which the djinn is housed in and how you summon him out of, and then since I love the djinn so much, and especially the effects and the makeup that they did, but I made the main focus my, of my piece on, and I will most certainly show you guys a fun little time lapse of where it started from a pencil sketch all the way through painting. Now I did paint this with, it was a mixture of acrylic and gouache paints. Now gouache, for people who don't know, it's in the watercolor family and it's a lot more opaque, much like an acrylic where it still keeps that nice vibrant color when it dries, but like watercolor you can re-wet it so you can really really layer things really well. I also added another fun paint to it, a little surprise that you will see at the end.
with that, my friends, with Wishmaster. So let's take this poor forgotten movie out of the oubliette and hopefully into our own collection and maybe pop it in your own DVD. I don't think there's a Blu-ray of it, so I think you could only get it. I actually found this. It's a twofer. Wishmaster 1 and 2. Uh, you, could, you could ignore the two part. And there's four of them technically in the series, and unless you're really, really drunk with a lot of good friends ready to rip on a movie, I said just do... The first one is the best one. The first one is what we talked about tonight, and the one that I greatly enjoy, and I highly suggest that you guys could pick up. You could only get it in the twofer, as far as I've been able to see. There is no Blu-ray of it, as far as I've been able to research. But just for this one movie alone, it's worth the five bucks price you could get at a discount DVD store. So go ahead and pick it up, pop it in, enjoy, and let's keep this one in our memory bank. Very well. <gasps> that which is eternal cannot die. But if it's any consolation, sweet Alex, that hurt like hell.